Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today I've got a classic head-to-head -head CPU battle for you guys. It actually recently occurred to me that since the release of not just Intel's new 11th Gen Core series, but also AMD's Zen 3 based Ryzen processors, which came out at the start of last year, I haven't actually produced a single head-to-head -head CPU comparison. So yeah, it's been about a year now since I've done one of those. I guess the reason for that being that last year was just a wash with new products. So didn't have too much chance to do the usual big benchmarks and things that we like to do. Though I did invest quite a bit of time exploring stuff like you know, CPU and GPU scaling. Anyway, I thought I'd get back to the big CPU benchmarks. So I decided to kick things off with a comparison between the Ryzen 7 5800X and Core i7 11700K, both of which are eight core 16 thread CPUs priced around $400 US. Another reason why I've decided to make this comparison now is because I have heard that AMD is flooding the market with Zen 3 CPUs. So buying a part like the 5800X should be a lot easier than it has been. Right now it's down from $450 US to $430 US. So a small discount there, but those are pretty rare these days as is stock. But at the time of making this video, the 5800X appears to be in stock just about everywhere. And some are even selling it at this discounted price. So things are certainly looking promising. Then we have the Core i7-11700K, which is a brand new product and as such has only been available for about two months now. At $395 US, it's not terrible value either and certainly nothing like the Core i9 version, which is essentially binned silicon selling for $600 US. There's also the discounted previous generation 10700K at $330, though we won't be looking at that part today, but depending on interest, I could go back and add the 10th gen part to the results. Speaking of the results, we'll get to those in a moment, but before we do, a few quick words about the test setup. Both CPUs have been tested using DDR4-3800 CL14 memory. I've managed to get my hands on a higher quality G-Skill Triton Z Neo 32 gigabyte kit of this stuff, and it's very impressive. So that's the memory, and it means I won't be using the typical CL14-3200 kit for this benchmark. For the GPU, I'm not using the GeForce RTX 3090, and the reason for that being that the Radeon RX 6900 XT is just much faster at 1080p. And although I have also tested at 1440p and 4K, 1080p is really where we're able to compare CPU performance as it helps to reduce the GPU bottleneck. Then for the motherboards, for the AM4 platform, we have the MSI X570 Unifier running the latest BIOS, and for the LGA 1200 platform, the Gigabyte Z590 Aorus Master, again using the latest BIOS. And of course, the latest display drivers and Windows 10 version have also been used. In total, I've tested 32 games at 1080p, 1440p, and 4K, and we'll look at the data for about a dozen titles and then get into the usual data breakdown graphs. Starting things off, we'll look at a few games that really did represent the kind of performance margins you'll typically see between these two processors when it comes to gaming. And that is to say, for the most part, they're really very similar. In this example, using Horizon Zero Dawn, the 5800X was all of 2% faster at 1080p, which is really a negligible difference, especially with both CPUs enabling well over 100 FPS at all times. Watch Dogs Legion is another game where the Ryzen processor it was faster, but by a meaningless 2% margin. Interestingly, a similar margin was seen at all three tester resolutions, even at 4K. Of course, we're only talking about a margin of just one FPS here, but it was highly repeatable. So the Intel processor does impose a small performance penalty, though, as I said earlier, it ultimately results in what is a meaningless difference. I also tested with the new Metro Exodus enhanced version of the game and found that despite being able to push well over 100 FPS even at 1440p, thanks to the variable rate shading, the CPU played virtually no role here. Or rather, these two 8-core CPUs were sufficiently powerful enough so it made no difference. I've been told that the new 11th gen CPUs perform really well in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, leaving their Zen 3 competitors in the dust. That, however, was not what I found in my testing. Rather, performance was once again very similar. Even in the CPU-heavy Cyberpunk 2077, we find very little difference between these AMD and Intel processors. The 11700K was 2% faster at 1080p, while the opposite was true at 1440p, and then identical results were seen at 4K. So overall, another game where frame rates are much the same using either one of these CPUs. 
Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order is another good example of a game that wasn't designed with high frame rates in mind, and we actually see this quite a bit, especially with single player titles. The 6900 XT maxed out at just over 100 FPS using either CPU, resulting in very similar 1080p and 1440p data. Fortnite though was developed with high refresh rate gaming in mind, though the game can still be quite clunky at times. Anyway, here we're looking at similar 1% low performance using either CPU, while the 5800X was up to 6% faster when comparing the average frame rate. Again, I'd say this is a negligible difference, as both were pushing up around 200 FPS. Death Stranding is a game that certainly doesn't require 200 FPS, but if you have either of these CPUs with a 6900XT, that's exactly what you'll get at 1080p, and really even at 1440p. The Ryzen processor was again 6% faster, so technically the superior performer here, but again, with both pushing over 160 FPS at all times in this test, you have to wonder if it even matters. Resident Evil Village is the newest game featured in this battery of benchmarks, and as good as it looks, the Radeon RX 6900 XT had no issue delivering extreme frame rates in this single player title. That said, if you're after maximum performance, the 5800X was 12% faster at 1080p, though that margin is almost entirely eliminated at the higher 1440p resolution. One of the biggest issues we had in Intel's 11th gen core series was the regression in performance seen in some games, and one such game was Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege. We saw in our 11900K review that this new flagship Core i9 part was 7% slower than the part it was replacing, so the 10900K, and that handed AMD the win in that instance. Again, the 11700K doesn't fare particularly well here, at least relative to the 5800X, as the Ryzen processor was 18% faster when comparing the average frame rate, and 33% faster for the 1% low. Those are certainly some big margins, but again, with well over 300 FPS at all times, how many of you will really notice the difference? Also, for those of you gaming at 1440p, the 5800X is only up to 7% faster, and then 5% at 4K. Moving on, the Core i7-11700K does stumble pretty badly in War Thunder, handing the 5800X a massive 22% victory at 1080p and 1440p. For some reason, the Intel CPU limits system performance much earlier than the 5800X, and I'm not sure if this is an 11th gen issue, as I haven't tested the 10700K yet, but this isn't the only game where Intel came up well short. Performance also took a hit in World War Z, and again, while we are talking about seriously high frame rates, it was very interesting to see that the 5800X offered almost 30% more performance at 1080p. Again, I don't know if this is another 11th gen gremlin, or if Zen 3 is just particularly punchy here. I'll need to test again with the 10700K to find out. But at least for this comparison, AMD is much faster. Whether or not you need more than 200 FPS in World War Z is hard to say. I'd think not, but then who am I to say? Okay, so there's a look at a dozen games tested. Now it's time to compare these CPUs across all 32 games, starting with the 1080p data. So let's go do that. Now, the first thing that jumps out at me here is just how much more consistent the Ryzen 7 5800X is when compared to the Core i7-11700K. As well as AMD's been doing over the past few years with Zen, Zen Plus, and then Zen 2, when it comes to gaming performance, they've been a bit all over the place, it has to be said. Super competitive in some games, while nowhere in others. Here though, we're seeing that at worst, the Zen 3 based 5800X is 2% slower than the 11700K a negligible difference, as I've said many times now, when that margin was in favor of AMD. Also, as I've said countless times in the past when comparing CPUs and GPUs, I deem any margin that's within 5% or less to be a draw. Basically, the margin's just so small that you won't realize the difference, and therefore, it just doesn't matter. So, sticking with that belief, we see that for 75% of the games tested, the margins are meaningless as both CPUs enabled the same gaming experience. Still, that does leave eight games where the AMD processor did offer significant performance gains, though you'd need to evaluate each title individually, as in some instances we're talking about hundreds of FPS in a single player title, like World War Z for example. Still, the 5800X did offer big performance gains in titles such as World War Z, War Thunder, Rainbow Six Siege, Battlefield V, and Resident Evil Village. That said, it is well worth keeping in mind that those margins were seen at 1080p using a Radeon RX 6900 XT. For those gaming at 1440p, the margins in most of these games will shrink, especially if you're using a GPU that isn't quite as powerful as the 6900 XT, and perhaps the only exceptions here might be games like World War Z and War Thunder. 
Overall, the Ryzen 7 5800X was just 3% faster on average. So for the vast majority of games, you'll be looking at near identical performance using either one of these CPUs. So there you have it. When it comes to gaming, it really doesn't matter which of these CPUs you use, Ryzen 7 5800X or Core i7 11700K, performance is gonna be much the same. That said, for a list of reasons, one is better than the other, but I just wanted to make it clear that when it comes to the thing that probably matters most, there's little difference. So I guess what I'm trying to say is there's really no need to feel any buyer's remorse on this one, especially if all you care about is FPS performance. So now that I've got that disclaimer out of the way, which is the better CPU? I'm sure this won't be a surprise to many of you, but yeah, AMD wins this comparison. The Ryzen 7 5800X is the better choice for a number of reasons. Reasons that include stuff like the significantly greater power efficiency, uh, the far better upgrade path thanks to what is overall a vastly superior platform. As I see it, there's really no advantage to buying the Core i7 11700K. I can't think of a single thing that this CPU does better. Some might point to overclocking, that usually comes up when discussing Intel CPUs, but really, especially with this 11th gen, there's just little to no headroom left, especially if you're already running the CPU on a board without power limits. So I'd say the tunability of both of these CPUs is very similar. Most of the gains are gonna come from memory tuning. The big issue with the 11700 is power consumption. And while I didn't show power data in this video, as the focus really was on gaming performance, you can simply look at any 11700K review to get that information. It won't have changed. There are multiple reasons why increased power usage is an issue. For one, it means motherboard pricing does go up as a more robust VRM is required, and that certainly is the case for Intel motherboards. It also means you'll need to invest more in cooling, otherwise you will face high operating temperatures, and in the worst cases, throttling or stability issues. Speaking of which, the Ryzen 7 5800X is known to be a bit of a hot CPU, despite using far less power than a part like the 11700K, but it's true. With a quality cooler, you're still looking at load temperatures of around 80 degrees with the Ryzen 7 processor, but I don't see this as being an issue for a few reasons. Firstly, you can't compare operating temperatures between brands, so you can't directly compare the 5800X and 11700K, just like you can't compare GPUs, say the 6800 XT and RTX 3090. And the reason being that they aren't necessarily reporting the same thing. Depending on offsets and probe locations, the readouts can be quite different and therefore don't make for an apples to apples comparison. At the end of the day, it really is all about power consumption. That's what matters the most. So as long as the CPU is performing as expected and is able to maintain 100% stability, temperatures are largely irrelevant. The biggest win of all for AMD though is the AM4 platform. While it is true that both LJ1200 and AM4 at the end of their life, at least that is the expectation at this point in time, you still have many more options with AMD. Should you invest in the Core i7 11700K on a shiny new Z590 motherboard, that's it, you're done. The system is effectively set in stone. There's no future upgrade to be had. The Core i9 11900K, for example, has nothing to offer you. It's essentially the exact same CPU. On the other hand, the 5800X has real upgrade paths on offer. You could move to the 12 core 5900X, for example, or even the 16 core 5950X. So the ability to double the core count and processing power exists on this platform. Finally, when it comes to gaming performance, as I opened with, performance overall really is much the same, but technically the 5800X is faster. And an important note to make is the fact that overall performance was more consistent, at least in our 32 game sample. When it comes to price, the 5800X, Costs about $35 US more right now, so a 9% price premium there, but you'll typically make up that difference on the motherboard pricing. So at the end of the day, the pricing gap is largely irrelevant, especially given that both of them cost up around $400 US. So for all of those reasons, I'd ignore the Core i7 11700K and just get the Ryzen 7 5800X. And by the sounds of it, buying a Zen 3 CPU is about to become easier than ever before. And that is gonna do it for this head-to-head -head comparison. If you liked the video, you guys know what to do. Uh, if you'd like to subscribe, you can also do that. That'll give you notifications for upcoming videos. And you know, we're always making new videos and new content for you guys. And you can also join the Hard Runbox community over at Floatplane or Patreon if you wanna get some pretty cool perks like access to our exclusive Discord chat where Tim and myself are active with the rest of the awesome Hard Runbox community.
We have a live show that Tim and myself do for Patreon and Floatplane members each month. Behind the scenes content, Q&A, a lot of cool stuff there. So if you're interested, feel free to check it out. The links are in the video description. If not, perfectly fine. And I would like to just thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.